Oh, thank you. I can take this off now? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right, I'm an Attic. My name is Kelsey. <laughs> Just so you all know, um, I don't like the whole podium thing. I had to speak at a meeting that's usually like where we sit around a table and like, ever do I need this? I can you guys hear me? Can anyone not hear me? Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's the boyfriend, if you were wondering. Um, so yeah, I was in the car. Um, I take H and I into a facility. Um, I had someone speaking for me. He had reached out to Eric. Eric had given him a call back. Um, Eric asked me to speak. I didn't even have to think about it, you know, because when NA asked me to show up, I show up. Um, I wasn't thrilled. I don't like sharing my story. I get lost. I feel like I'm jumbled all over the place. So I asked for a topic between Eric and the other member who is not here, who was supposed to be here. Um, they came up, we came up with a few topics and then, you know, they picked one eventually. Picked um, one. so, you know, like he said, there are other relationships. When I hear relationships, the first thing I think of is romantic relationships. That's where my head goes. That's where my head has gone my whole life. Um, but when I came into Narcotics Anonymous, I had to learn that there, the first relationship I was going to form is a relationship with a sponsor, right? And we don't hear about that a lot. Um, you know, there's, there's relationships with sponsors. You have to reform relationships that have been broken um, through active addiction, whether it's with family, it's with friends, it's with significant others. Um, you know, work relationships, when you get a job, you have to form relationships with the people that you work. I work in the treatment industry. NA doesn't endorse treatment, and the hardest thing I've learned by working in treatment is that my job is not a 12-step call, right? So I don't go into work to carry the message of Narcotics Anonymous because that's not what I'm paid to do. That, that for me is just like was the hardest thing I had to understand by working in treatment, right? I, I bring my presence of NA into my job by practicing the principles that I've learned here and, and – putting them into other aspects of my life because that's what my sponsor and the people around me have taught me how to do, you know? Um, so, you know, our literature talks about how um, some people would say that being um, unable to form and maintain relationships with people could be a, a, a symptom of our addiction, right? Because when I was using, I know I wasn't able to maintain or, um, oh, um, I wasn't able to maintain or form or, keep going any kind of relationship because I was too self-centered and too um, interested in what I could do to help myself, right? I wasn't worried about giving to other people or helping other people in, in what I could do for them. It was about what I could do for me and what I could get from them out of a relationship. So when I came into Narcotics Anonymous, just because I took the drugs away doesn't mean that my behaviors left. A lot of my, my relationships in early recovery, like they were, what can I get from you? What do you have to offer for me, right? Until it was brought to my attention that I'm forming relationships with people because I'm trying to get something from them, not because I'm trying to give something back. So, you know, um, by working the steps, I've learned that like relationships are a two-way street. You know, if I'm giving to someone, I should also be returning um, from them. Like I should be receiving from them if I'm giving to them. But if, I, if they're giving to me, I also need to to give to them as well. You know, um, the first, the first relationship I've done with that is my sponsor. I've been through three sponsors. I'm a little under two years clean. Um, I've had three sponsors. My first sponsor was awesome. I love her. She's still one of my best friends to this day. Um, she just, she had other things going on in her life and I found someone that was like the cool sponsor to have in NA, right? And a relationship pattern that I have in my life is like I always wanted to be accepted by the cool kids, right? So when I saw her and she offered me an opportunity to be my sponsor and sponsor me, I jumped on it. And I abandoned the first relationship I created with, with my original sponsor and I jumped into that, right? Because I wanted to be a part of, just like when I was in middle school and I wanted to be with the cool kids, you know, like I wanted them to accept me and I wanted them to think I was cool, but I just never fit in. So I get in with a new sponsor and I realize very quickly that like, they're just not my people and that's okay, right? Like you don't have to vibe with everyone here. You gotta love everybody, but you don't have to like everyone. You know, like those people just didn't fit for me. They were just different and like their goals were different and like I liked their lifestyle from the outside, but when I got in, I realized that I didn't like that lifestyle, 
right? I wanted to experience other things outside of what they were experiencing, right? So I had to think about like, not only now was I in a relationship that I was afraid to leave because I didn't want to feel like, I guess the word would be like, not a part of, like, I didn't want to feel like they didn't like me anymore because I left the sponsorship group. So I had this issue in my head, like, should I leave or should I just stay even though I'm uncomfortable and I know I'm not going to be honest with these people. And I talk to other support systems because another thing we do in Narcotics Anonymous is even when I have a sponsor, I have to form relationships with other people because the reality is my sponsor's not available 24-7, right? Sometimes I have to call other people. Just like when my sponsees call me, I always tell them if you call me and I don't answer, text me. If I can't answer, I'll text you back. If you call me twice, I know it's an emergency. But the reality is that that's not 100% all the time either because I have a life outside of Narcotics Anonymous. I work full time, right? I'm in a relationship, you know, I, I'm here, I'm in Narcotics Anonymous. You guys will see my face, like I, I show up uh, because that's how I know how to stay clean. So, you know, like I ended up leaving that sponsorship relationship after talking to support systems, after calling my original sponsor and being like, hey, this was a bad move. Like, I don't know what to do. And she said, it's real simple. Just look for a new sponsor, right? Because what I like to do is I like to complicate things in my head and I like to make everything more difficult than it really is. So I, I, took, a, I took a long time to find my sponsor that I have now who I've been with for about nine, 10 months now um, because I wanted to be particular, right? I wanted, I wanted to find someone that I knew I could trust that I could relate to. And I did. And our stories weren't the same. They weren't identical, but I understood and I related to her because I, I understood the feelings that she felt and the things she went through to get here. Right. She was from a different state. She had a different background, you know, but it worked for me. She had what I wanted. She had a job. She had a car. She had an apartment. And superficial wise, that was good for me. I when I first got here, I just didn't want to get high. Right. And some days I did want to get high, but I wanted to learn what it was like to live a life without using drugs. So when I got into this sponsorship relationship, I I started to learn things outside of like not just just not using drugs. Right. I learned how to be a responsible member and like go to meetings and like do service and like help other people. And I also learned how to communicate effectively with other people. Right. So like that played into the role of like fixing some of the things I had broken and harmed when I was using, right? I was able to, to start to repair some of the damage I had done with my family, with my sister. Um, you know, she's kind of, you know, I have some other family here and there, um, but she was like my main source that I had no contact with because I had harmed her a lot, right? And I was unable to take accountability or responsibility for how I had acted because my ego was in the way, right? So my sponsor taught me how to how to balance my ego in a way that was appropriate. And she taught me how to function in society to maintain and form relationships. And like the sad thing is that like the people that I came in here with, I still love them all, but they're not all still in my circle, right? Because I've learned from being in and out for five years that like, if you do the work, you're gonna outgrow people. And if you don't do the work, people are gonna outgrow you, right? And I love them all the same and I wish them no harm and I hope the best for them. But the reality is that I'm somewhere in my recovery where like I can't go back and like stick with the crowd that's not the winners, right? Because this is a life or death situation. We've buried a lot of people and we're gonna continue to bury people because that's where we're at in life. You know, not everybody's gonna get it and not everybody's gonna stay clean. But I'm not going to be the one that you guys have to bury because I'm going to stay in the middle. I'm going to do what I have to do. And I'm going to take the suggestion from the people that give them to me. Right. So outside of of uh, my sponsor and like reforming relationships with my family, like I started to create friendships. Right. People that I genuinely cared about and loved about and like loved, you know, like it wasn't just about like the men. And don't get me wrong. I have a horrible history of like the codependency, like. I was just filling the void, right? Because relationships are something that you need to function in life. You can't go through life without creating relationships with someone, whether it's the mailman or the the guy at the corner store. Like I've always had a relation. You have to have a relationship, right? You see people, you don't live by yourself. You don't cook your own food. You don't 
You know, like people are going to be around you. And like, I had to learn that like, not like when I'm creating friendships, like I'm very, I'm open with people, but to a point, right? So I share what I want and I keep the rest to me. And I thought that I wasn't being genuinely honest with people, right? And then my sponsor told me that not everything is for everybody all the time. If I don't feel comfortable sharing it in a meeting, that's okay. Like maybe it's not for a group setting. Maybe it's for me and my sponsor or for me and my higher power, right? That's another relationship that I've had to learn how to form in Narcotics Anonymous. I had no clue. The only time I ever asked for God was like when I ran out of drugs, when I was in a bad situation, or like my boyfriend broke up with me and I wanted him to come back, right? In active addiction, that's when I called on to God. When I needed something, I never thanked him. You know, I never apologized when I made a mistake, whatever. So when I got here and you guys threw the word God at me, I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh no, this isn't going to work for me. And then someone brought it to my attention that it's a concept that I get to decide. I don't have to follow what you guys believe in. I get to create my own and that makes it special. You know, when I first got here, I used the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous as my higher power because you guys were greater than me and you were staying clean and I couldn't get 24 hours clean, right? I couldn't get five hours clean. I needed to understand that like you guys were doing it and I don't know how it was happening, but like that was a spiritual experience to me that like you guys could stay clean. People picking up medallions, picking up 30 days, like that was crazy to me. And then as I stayed clean and I worked my steps and I got intimate with a sponsor and I opened up to people and I shared in meetings when I wasn't feeling like I wanted to stay here because I was uncomfortable, that's when I started to develop more of like my higher power grew, right? So you guys worked for me and you still work for me. And when I have issues trusting in my higher power, I can always revert back to you guys to understand that like this shit always works. There's someone who's always recovering from Narcotics Anonymous. No matter what happens, this always works, right? And so like my higher power has grown. And for that, I'm grateful for because not everybody has that experience. But because I put the work in, I got the results. If you like for me, I wanted to stay clean so bad that like um, I didn't care what anybody told me. And that doesn't mean that I followed all the suggestions because I didn't, right? So, like, I'm going to read something in here um, about romantic relationships just because it fits for me, you know? Because the reality is that, like, when we come in here, like, a lot of times people say that, like, you should stay out of relationships for a year or whatever, right? So, the literature says, don't get into romantic relationships in your first year. Might be the most repeated, least listened to piece of advice in the fellowship. We need time to get on our feet on the ground to build support, to work some steps and figure out who we are. But many of us don't take that time in the beginning. This is like building a house without laying a foundation. Sooner or later, that work needs to get done. And it's a lot easier to do it in the beginning than to try to build a foundation under a standing structure. Many of us who don't take that time in the beginning find that we need it later. If we survive the first breakup, we have a pretty good idea of what that time is for. I have never in my life, any time I've gotten clean, stayed out of a relationship for a, for a year. Never, right? And I don't suggest that you, that you get in a relationship in the first year because I've gone through it, right? I have, I've been in and out for five years in Narcotics Anonymous. And my four previous relapses, I always blamed in being in a relationship but it had nothing to do with being in a relationship. It's that I made that person not only my higher power, but I focused more of my energy onto that relationship that wasn't working instead of focusing my my energy onto staying clean and doing what my sponsor told me to do, right? So when I got clean this time, I automatically got into a relationship because that's what I knew how to do. You guys took the drugs away, so I needed something else to fill that void I had inside of me. So men just worked for me right? So I got into a relationship with someone that was not appropriate for me to be in. We didn't really even like each other that much. You could ask him. He'll say the same thing, right? We were from different crowds. We liked different music. Not to mention I was like four or five months pregnant with like someone else's child, right? But he lived in a house and I lived in halfway and he said I could come live with him and it was convenient. So I jumped on it because I didn't know what else to do, 
right? Because I was newly clean. I had no friends in this area. I had just moved back, right? And um, so I got into the relationship. And I knew right away that it didn't work, right? We didn't get along. We had no sort of communication. We, neither one of us was willing to stand by our morals and values that you're supposed to create in a relationship. You know, like we had nothing. All we had was a common thought that like this is convenient like he has like a pretty girlfriend and like I have somewhere to live that's not halfway right and so I stayed there for a long time until I was sick and tired of being there and realizing that like this isn't what I want right and so I moved out and we stayed together you know like you do because I'm another one who likes to stay in relationships past the expiration date right because that's another thing I do because I'm unable to allow like my ego is too big to to say that like this isn't working for me because I don't want people to think that he broke up with me because God forbid they think that he broke up with me like they don't know who I am, right? So I stay in relationships past expiration dates for the fear that I'll be alone and the fear that my ego will be stepped on, right? So not only that, but then um, I'm in labor, right? And he comes to the hospital. Mind you, there's like probably 20 people from Narcotics Anonymous in my in my delivery room there's some people in this room that were there right and the boyfriend comes and, and he comes in and it's like he's he came at like 7 30 and all of a sudden it's like nine o'clock and he's like well I'm gonna I'm gonna you're going in for a c-section I'm gonna head on out I gotta go to work tomorrow like I got shit to do and it was in that moment that I saw that like this person like it wasn't the fact that this person wasn't there for me it was the fact that like his priority was not me and what I was going through my son's father was not a part of my pregnancy at all right he was someone I got into a relationship early in my recovery and it didn't work out and I used but I didn't use because it didn't work out I used because I didn't take the steps and I didn't do the right things in order to make sure that I would be okay if we didn't end up together so you know after that the the relationship ended and like I moved on or did whatever I did. I don't know. I was like really out of my mind at that point in my life. Um, You know, my son was adopted. For those of you that don't know, Um, I found myself at eight months pregnant living in a hotel with no money, no job, no car, no way to raise or care for a child. I went to my home group and I met a man who was about 60 years old. He said, and we were out to eat fellowshipping after a meeting because that's what we do here. And he said, my son and daughter-in-law have been trying to get pregnant for eight years and they cannot have a baby. And in that moment, I saw God come down and say, this is your opportunity, right? And that's that, that in two weeks, we had a baby shower and three weeks later I gave birth and that baby has the best family I've ever seen in my entire life, right? And I was adopted as a child. So I know what it's like to be the adopted child. And now I get to experience what it's like to be the birth mother. My son just turned one, um, two weeks ago when I was at his first birthday party, right? Um, I get to watch him grow up. I get to see him. Um, For those of you that weren't here, when I picked up my medallion, him and his entire family of 30 um, people were all here to watch me pick up a medallion. And his grandfather gave me the medallion, right? So talk about gifts of recovery and creating relationships. That family has become my relationship, has become my family because I get to pick my own family when I get here. It's not like blood family. It's not that you get who you get. It's you get to pick who you want in your circle, right? By creating and maintaining relationships with other people. So, you know, going back to the relationships, I got right into a relationship. Probably I was, what was I like, nine months clean. I was shot out of my mind. Um, The void, the baby was gone. I didn't have a a relationship with a sponsor. I did not have a relationship with a higher power. So I figured I might as well get into a romantic relationship because at least they can give me something, right? That was me seeking for outside validation and again, trying to find what people could give to me, right? And that relationship grew because I started working steps and I started doing service and I started showing up. And so as that relationship grew, you know, things popped up, right? Because I was in a relationship with another person in recovery who was newly in recovery, who I had probably had no business being with, right? And, um, you know, stuff happened, you know? Like, we didn't know how to communicate. We didn't know how to set boundaries. And, like, thank God I got in the middle when I did and I started working steps 
because when that person decided to pick up and use, I didn't have to, right? And I felt the pain that the literature talks about that if we don't stay out of a relationship for a year, we feel that pain if we can make it through without using, right? I felt the pain and I felt the devastation. And like, I really pitied myself for a long time until I realized that like, that has nothing to do with me. That was his own stuff. Whatever took him out is on him. It has nothing to do with me because my recovery, I'm responsible for my recovery just as he's responsible for his, right? And so, you know, through a lot of work on myself and like working steps, like this shit is not easy. Relationships are not easy. They will never be easy, but they're always important for your life, right? Like you have to have them. Like I'm still with that person. He's still here. He just got 60 days clean. Right. And I've, I'm supporting him in the ways I know how to without giving my entire self to him. Right. And we fight and we argue and we're not perfect. And we probably like it sucks a lot, but like we make it work because we're both willing to put the work in on ourselves to maintain a relationship. Right. So like another thing that I'm big on is like I had to learn like what it takes to stay in a relationship. Right. So like. I had to understand that like in prior relationships because recovery is all about identifying like what patterns have I have I shown throughout my entire life that had led me to the end of the road, right? What patterns? And one of my patterns is like I make excuses for people when they do something that I know is wrong. I justify when people do behaviors that I know are against my morals and values. I stay past the expiration date, right? And like a lot of people tell me like, a lot often like why are you with this person you have no business being with a newcomer right but the reality is that like I'll use an excuse of like well I was with him before he was a newcomer right so like it's okay but the reality is that like I'm with that person because I love him I respect him and I know where he's at and I'm willing to meet him where he's at but not bring myself to that spot right I'm able to grow while he grows in his own way you know and like the other thing is like the second that I start justifying his actions or uh you know not listening to my morals and values just to make him feel okay or whatever the case may be that's when I'm in trouble right when my character defects start to flare up and other people are identifying before I am that's when I'm in trouble right I do a lot of work with my sponsor and it's kind of funny how like how like sponsorship works, right? Because I had a lot of medical issues when I got clean. Um, I had two strokes and like my sponsor has an autoimmune. So like it works out because we both have the medical aspect. And like, so when I started being able to sponsor women, you know, like now I have women that are six, seven, eight months pregnant asking me to sponsor them. Or I have women that can't stay out of a relationship and not understand why every time the boyfriend leaves her that uh, she relapses. Right. Because what my sponsor taught me is like you don't relapse because the boyfriend leaves you or you lose the job or whatever, because what we do here is we work steps, not when those things happen. We work steps all the time so that when those things happen, we know how to handle them. Right. So like I don't write on a first, second, third, fourth, whatever step, because I think that my boyfriend's going to cheat on me. Or because I think I'm going to get fired from my job. I do those things so that if that does happen in my life, I know how to handle it. Right? Because when I got here, I didn't know how to do anything except get high. Right? And for a long time, all I wanted to do was not get high. So now I'm at a place where I'm learning life skills through working the steps. And I'm practicing those principles in my life so that I don't have to go back to where I came from. Because I'm growing as an individual and I'm also watching other people grow, right? Relationships with sponsees. I, listen, I have a sponsee. She just picked up four months clean. This girl has been in and out for eight, nine years. Hasn't been able to get 30 days clean. She's super pregnant. She's about to give birth. And like, she picked me as a sponsor because she had heard my story and she related, right? But she didn't relate because of the situations. She related because I harped on the feelings I felt and the experiences I went through to get here. And they weren't identical, but it worked for her. Sponsorship's a two-way street, even with my sponsees. Sometimes my sponsees give me more than I'm able to give them. But that's how it works, right? That's what I've been taught on how it works, you know? So like, 
again, like relationships are essential to your life. They're essential to my life. I have a relationship with some, every single person I talk to. Whether I know them or not, I'm forming a relationship. You know, so I have to be like vigilant of like what I say and like what I do and like I'm not going to sit here and talk the talk and then not go and then go to work tomorrow and like curse my boss out right because he pissed me off like I have to be able to practice all the principles that I learn here in all the aspects of my life in order to maintain those relationships that I'm forming and to rekindle relationships that I've harmed you know and it's not an easy process and I'm not going to tell you that it's an easy process because it's fucking not it's difficult it might be one of the most difficult things that I've had to done since I've got clean but it's saving my life When I start to back off from recovery, because I'm in the middle and because I formed relationships, people pull me back in. When all of a sudden people are only seeing me at two meetings instead of five, they're calling me, where are you at? They hold me accountable. And then I also hold other people accountable because that's what we do here. That's how we stay clean. That's how I stay clean. I I maintain relationships with other people and I do what's suggested of me and I do my step work and I call my sponsor no matter how I feel. Right. I have a girl that's calling me constantly right now talking about I just feel guilty calling because I'm still using. I said, just keep calling because eventually you're going to call before you use and it's going to be different. And that was two weeks ago. She called me yesterday like I really want to use, but I haven't used all day. And I said, remember that time two weeks ago when I told you if you just keep calling, eventually it's going to get ingrained in you to call before you use. And now she's calling before she used. Right. So that's the that's the gifts of recovery and and that's what keeps me coming back so thanks for letting me share you want your phone